Hello. <laughs> Welcome again. Thank you. Um, so we have some people who are here who I'm sure are very familiar with your work, and I know Michelle gave a brief uh, description of it. But I'm wondering for people who are new and they might have heard a little bit, but they haven't really heard what it is from your um, perspective, uh, could you say a few words about what the work is, the essence of the work? in your world? The work is a way to identify the thoughts you're thinking that are causing your suffering, the cause of your emotion and suffering. So it's a way to identify those thoughts, those assumptions, those judgments running in your head, to not only identify them, but to question and to question those thoughts. There are only four questions that, that I offer, and you can add or subtract, but four that have served me well. So I question the judgments that maybe I have, ex I'm experiencing, I identify it, I question it, and it shifts my identity. For example, he hurt my feeling. The first question, is it true? Now I'm going to meditate on that moment in time, three days ago, when he hurt my feeling. I'm going to meditate on that situation. And I'm going to see it in my mind's eye. I'm going to anchor there and ask myself, is it true that he hurt my feeling? and then I'm going to wait. I'm meditating on a moment in time. After inviting whatever wisdom is there to show me. And I wait, it's a meditative state again. So I can, I can see that situation in my mind's eye and then I'm shown either a yes or no, it's true or it's not. And then there's that third question, how do I react when I believe the thought, he hurt my, seat, my feelings, I'm, I'm anchored in that situation, I'm going, to, I'm going to stay there, and I'm going to witness how I reacted, what I felt, what aggression or, or anything, any lack of love, we'd say, or attack. Notice my attitude, how I reacted when I believed the thought he hurt my feeling. Notice how that affects my world, my physical body. And I'm going to witness that. You hear about the stillness. Get still. Notice the mind that will defend. Thank it for sharing and go back where you're anchored witness how you react when you believe that judgment and how you treat that person and how that affects your own life. And then the fourth and last question, who or what are you without that? That thought, you know, what I love to say is they're like post-its. Here's this perfect human being, this perfect human being, and then I put the post-it on him. He hurt my feeling. So then I meet him 10 days later, and I know who he is. <laughs> He's hurtful. And I'm not thinking it consciously. There's just something about him I don't like. I don't trust. <laughs> post-its. Post-its. So these judgments, these assumptions on yourself, others, the world, create our selves, our identity. So I, I have a thought, that because I, I was thinking about this. I was like, what's the thought? Oh, I let, let me interrupt one more. Oh, sure. The fourth question, <laughs> again, who or what am I without that? Who or what am I without that? I am seeing, I'm connected to that human being as I sit in my practice, my meditative practice, and those questions. 
I see that human being and I witness. And I see things now in that situation that I couldn't see there because the life of a believer won't allow you to see what's there. What you believe creates all of it. So if you never feel right, if you, you occasionally don't feel right in yourself, you're not in yourself. Not in that, 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 that your true nature. Um, so I've, I've noticed that I have a thought that has been sticking with me, and, and uh, the thought is, uh, our president is too arrogant. You're My thought is, our president is too arrogant. Too our arrogant. Our president is too arrogant. Now, there's a post-it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm, maybe other people share this thought <laughs> in the audience, <laughs> so I don't think it's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, so how would I... So I would, how would I orient with that? And I noticed it impacts me. I look for news that he's going to go down. <laughs> and um, I can like, I knew, see, I knew. Um, <laughs> so there's different ways it impacts me. And so if I'm using inquiry, uh, what would I do with that thought that actually seems, uh, it's, it feels true. Yeah. Now, is it really true? I don't, I've never met him. I don't so, know him. But. So, so your president mm-hmm. is too arrogant. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. How many of you have ever had that thought? <laughs> <laughs> it's an epidemic. You know, it's popular. It's, it's a trending thought. <laughs> yeah, it's a trending thought. <laughs> <laughs> and we pass our little bots around. <laughs> we bought it. So our president is too arrogant. Mm-hmm. How many of you see in your mind's eye right now when, and when Soren said that, or when, when you heard that, how many of you saw the president in your mind's eye? Would you raise your hands? Okay. That's how it works. That's how the mind works. Okay. So our president is too or I'll say, mm-hmm. your president. Mm-hmm. No two people have the same president. <laughs> Whatever you believe onto that president is yours. Okay, so there are a lot of presidents. In this. <laughs> so, so, your president, the president, is, um, is too arrogant. Is it true? Now, this is, this is meditation. So imagine, you know, what is it you have in mind? Get something to anchor in. Maybe you were watching television and you maybe witnessed um, the image in my head is he's, he's literally shoving one man aside so that he can be in front. And that's the image that came to my mind. So that's the one I'm focusing on. You find yours, and Soren, you find mm-hmm. yours. And so we're going to anchor there. So our president is, is too arrogant, is it true? And the answer has to be yes or no. That's why yeah. we have to get so still in it. And no isn't going to serve you if you haven't really experienced that it is a no for you. So your answer would be yes. And if my answer is yes, I'm going to get still and continue to sit in that and see if I've missed anything. Now, I don't have to do anything. I'm going to be shown. My eyes shut in my my mind's eye. I'm going to be shown. What am I I going to see as I anchor there, Mm -hmm. meditating on that moment in time when I saw him Mm -hmm. move that man? So, yeah, my answer is yes. Yes, good. Okay, so that sounds very, that sounds very, um, very. Yeah, (laughs) maybe common, may Mm -hmm. not be common, but yeah. Yeah, so um, notice, Soren, how you react when you believe the thought he's arrogant. Number one, you see the image, and maybe other images. Mm -hmm. That's the First reaction, how do you react when you believe the thought? But what is most identifiable are the emotions that happen when you see the image. 
I see him just almost shoving that man aside. And I see that, and the emotion. And then I notice the next time I see him on television, maybe I'm not aware of it, but I put that post-it in my mind's eye of him shoving that man onto what I'm seeing here. You see the past, the past, the past, the past makes a believer. So how do you react and get in touch with your emotions? Yeah. And those images of the future when you see them. For me, I feel, I feel tension. I feel a certain level of anger. Um, and uh, anger at him, anger at the people who voted him in. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm wanting to catch the news to find out when I'm going to be right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I notice a certain amount of absorption yeah. um, to kind of get the pieces together. And the future, there are future images in there too, maybe. Mm -hmm. The future image. Future images in there. Yes. Like, like um, I'm anxious to see if I'm going to be right. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm anxious to see if I'm going to be right. I'm anxious to be right. To be right. <laughs> yeah, but that's... A, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want, really want to see if I'm right. I'm yeah. anxious to be right, yeah. So, did you, so when you see that, um, do you sometimes see, um, um, like, the world being destroyed? I see him um, leaving the office in disgrace. <laughs> leaving the office in disgrace. <laughs> That's what I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you see that, and there he's standing, so there's a little disappointment there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the country might that. go through all kinds of class. I don't know, but the experience is that that would be satisfying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm revealing too much here, but it's not like I think about this all the time, but it is yeah. definitely in my consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. That would be satisfying until you think who yeah. would replace him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get that far. <laughs> what kind of dreamer are you? <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with this dreamer. Okay, sweetheart. So, yeah. so who would you be without the thought? Just sit in your image, yeah. the one you started with, the one you're anchored in. Just witnessing, eyes closed. Well, what would you be without? He's this is where, when, when we heard Sharon and, and Roshi Joan talk about um, compassion, connection, witness. Same situation, drop your post-it, witness, what do you see? And for you activists, <clears throat> some of us feel like if we're in that state of compassion, connection, we're not going to be as influential and effective. Look again. Where do you do your best work? You're angry. When you're in touch with wisdom. It's, it, it's like, you know, in the story where the, the waters parted, like the ocean parted, it, it, it does. It, it's like, it, it just parts and you can see. It's what we're capable of beyond the idea of war. There's nothing more powerful than, well, obviously, we don't call it, <clears throat> oh, I love doing that. I don't know why. I just didn't want to miss it. So do I, so like uh, I was doing this thing with my wife and my son the other day where there was cards and we, we, we picked the cards that we somewhat identify with and the card arrogant came up and I put that in the, the pile that I didn't identify with. <laughs> and um, my wife and my son were like, no, 
Wrong pile. I was like, no, no, this is like, um, <laughs> but they, they live with me, right? They live with me. And, um, and uh, so I couldn't really argue against both of them. They're strong, powerful. One, I can argue with, but two. Um, so in looking at, like, I know I have some of those same traits. Like, I don't want to take responsibility for my mistakes either. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, well, so that, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's um, you know, where, where we're moving next. So let's, yeah. let's move there. So um, uh, our president is arrogant. So uh, the work is inquiry. It's four questions. And then we flip it. We turn it around, and we just try it on like a new pair of boots. Let's try it on. Where does that? So the president is arrogant. I am arrogant. So in that situation, as you're anchored there, you can see it in your mind's eye. Where is it that you're arrogant? Are you asking? Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that makes three uh, of us, his wife, his I'm child. And and <laughs> yeah, they would probably have a much better answer. Um, I'm arrogant in the ways I don't want to take responsibility in terms of like if I don't like feedback, for example. Um. How Trumpish. <laughs> I'm arrogant and I can dismiss, I didn't explain it to talk about this. Uh, I feel like I can dismiss certain people, like I'll pay more attention to some people than other people. And so I can be um, like, oh, that person's more interesting and I can be very dismissive of others. So um, I'm sure there's more of it. Does it comes yeah, up and, right and I just, um, Soren, as one of your friends, you're probably the least arrogant person. And which, which shows so many of us in this. It shows me that it doesn't, as if I see that in others, it doesn't mean it's not true. But my work is where am I arrogant? So I can't change that person, but I can change one arrogant human being. <laughs> and I'm living with her. <laughs> And, and yeah. so it wakes me up. And yeah. for you to have that open-heartedness, that mm-hmm. open-mindedness, to be willing to look, is an, it, it just speaks to me that we all can. But just imagine one less arrogant, the power of one less arrogant person in this world. And you have that power. And if you can't do it, leave us alone. <laughs> Just the grace of living without arrogance. And it's a journey. It's a journey. But we, we begin somewhere. Yeah, beautiful. And I think some of the um, questions around the work is, um, and I wish if you could explain this, so, like, we question thoughts, but there was... A, thought of like, um, do I dress myself this morning, mm-hmm. which you decided to believe. I just, most mm-hmm. of us decided to believe mm-hmm. that thought. Um, there's a the thought of, oh, I need to be on time. Mm-hmm. And so there's thoughts that we both believed that thought mm-hmm. and acted accordingly. So I wonder, uh, so, we're almost out of time, but I wonder, could you say a little bit about that? Because well, I think Well, number one, are... I don't believe I dress myself this morning. You don't? No. And I don't have a dresser. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Okay. I see, and you probably all see in your mind's eye, an image of me dressing this morning. (laughs) How embarrassing is that? (laughs) (laughs) So I see an image of me dressing this morning, Uh and then uh, I see an image of me at the event, this breakout Uh that I'm about to do, and um, I can talk in the world, but what self is talking? Okay, I saw me dressing. Was that me? Okay, yeah, that's me. So I see me in the breakout later. Is that me? Okay, what self? Who am I? Have you ever heard the question? Who am I? This self? This self? This self? That's three of me. You know, I'm going to, I want to land. I want to know. Now, if I look at this self now, did you hear me say this self now? That's past. 
Look at these selves I'm accumulating. Okay, and we see those images. And if that's not, if that's not myself, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to get clear about not that, not that, not that, and it can leave you so present. Because right here, right now, if there's a job to do, this is where it is. It's not later. It's okay to plan. That's a beautiful thing, but you're doing it now. And this is where the wisdom is. You don't have to wait for later. Just now. But, but did I dress myself? In my world, that's the dream world. You know, I'm dreaming this, this me. So I'm allowed to, I'm awake enough to just be present. Just mm-hmm. present without faking it. And then you notice you do. <laughs> this work is about, you know, as Sharon and Joan discussed yesterday, the end of suffering. And when I believe my thoughts, I suffer. When I question them, I don't suffer. And I've come to see that this is true for every human being. And it is, it is a practice, a meditative practice. And, and you definitely see that in the person I gave the example of, our president. <laughs> um, he can have all the wealth and all the power and all the whatever. And um, the thoughts that create suffering for all of us um, is it's definitely a great something. Teacher. It's a great teacher. Yes. Yeah, a he's, bringing a, he's, a, he's a great teacher. He is like those aspects in us, like our arrogance, mm-hmm. those aspects that we see there in mm-hmm. us. Oh my goodness, if we used people like this as teachers, and you live with them, they're in your family, <laughs> and <laughs> then what a powerful, what a, what a, what power. Transformative experience. Yes, yeah. and that's the power that makes change. We don't yeah. have to hate or fear to make change. In fact, it gets in our way. And where am I doing war with any human being yeah. that stops me? I'm out of this state of where I, of understanding. Mm-hmm. And as a human race, it's, you know, we have more potential than that. Yeah. Thank you. I wish we had more time. Oh, We're out of time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Oh.